Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And everything the light touches. Apparently. Disney owns, and they're sort of uh, cannibalizing their own records now, aren't what, they? What? I've been saying this. Disney on Disney action. I said this earlier. Mouse yeah. on mouse. I just love this title. The reason I brought this up is because the title I thought was hilarious because it's so accurate. Yeah, so they finally did beat, and I had some comments on uh, an older video we did talking about how Endgame did not beat Avatar. It hadn't at that point. At that point, it had not. Now it has, and we're going to talk a little bit about that what Disney owning everything actually means for the entertainment business. And we'll talk a little bit about the Lion King um, smashing some records here again and some of the reactions, some of the funny reactions uh, to the Lion King. But before we get into the video, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It helps the channel immensely. And we've seen some some really uh, huge growth yep. this month. Um, we're not just talking about Disney's bank account. We're talking about our own our own channel growing. Uh, so thank you all for that. So, do you want to read the headline? Film from studio acquired by Walt Disney finally beats film from studio acquired by Walt Disney for box office record. That's awesome. I, I, that's a, I love the title on this one. I thought the title on this was hilarious. Yeah, because, so, okay, so Marvel Studios acquired by Disney uh, beat uh, Fox, right? Mm -hmm. Which Which owns Avatar. So let's let's read this here. Avengers Endgame, a movie about a bunch of beautiful superheroes being sad and breaking the timeline, is now the most financially successful movie of all time. It's been a long road. It's been a long yep. road. But we finally we have finally reached the end game, and really the winner all along has been Mickey Mouse. Yes, I agree. I like this so much. <laughs> After one theatrical re-release and months at the box office, Avengers Endgame has finally, finally earned Officially earned. Officially. Officially and finally, finally, it's been a long finally, road. Yeah. Two point seven nine billion worldwide, making it the most lucrative theatrical release ever. I just wish the movie was better. Uh, at least if you're not adjusting for inflation. If you are, it ranks at sixteen according to Box Office Mojo. Those buzz kills. <laughs> Sorry, that's such funny. buzz kills. Yeah, and people forget <laughs> Wait, about so that. So if you adjust for inflation, it's not. It's number sixteen. If you adjust for inflation, okay, that's funny. Uh, I fan, like these. I like this is one article I'm liking from, from IO9. IO9. Yeah. This means that the film, the culmination of a decade of Marvel Studios filmmaking and hype, has edged out Avatar, a franchise that Disney now also owns, after its acquisition of Fox earlier this year from its decade-long reign as the top-grossing film with $2.789 so So barely. Yeah, that, that's just Barely. Funny. Like, we're talking a couple, just a couple hundred million dollars. Yeah. Uh, but... It's funny because Avatar made a ton of money back in the day and literally nobody cares about it now. Yeah, it, it, I've never even seen all of it. I, but I do like Flight of Passage. I, I, I like, like the Pandora, ride, yeah. I like the parks. I just never watched the movie because I thought it was boring. Yeah, it's kind of boring. It's kind of boring. People saw it because I think for a lot of people it was the first uh, 3D movie. Well, see, that might be the problem because I don't like to do 3D movies because they make me sick. Ironically... Ironically, I have a story that ties Disney to Avatar. Okay. Okay, so the very first, I think it was the first family trip we took to Disney World, they had this thing where, uh, this offer where you could earn... Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Like a, a fast pass. Give or, a day, earn a day. You Give a day and you earn a day. Earn a day, right. It was either like a park ticket or a fast pass mm -hmm. or something like that. And uh, so we volunteered at the local movie theater. The Our kids were real little. They yeah. volunteered too at the dollar theater because it's part of the community center here in town so we volunteered and the movie playing was avatar that's right so we volunteered and and squid king couldn't watch it because it was too violent and he was like really little but uh we volunteered we scooped popcorn you know we cleaned up the sticky stuff on the carpet no we didn't do that yeah we, we, we did popcorn. the popcorn and, and stuff like that did the snack counter and volunteered and now now pinky boo did not because she was too little but squid king helped he did. And uh, we got our, our give a day, get a day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we got it from Avatar. Yeah. So there we go. There's our, our Disney connection. I didn't even think about it. It's like the six degrees of Avatar. Mickey Mouse. Well, Mickey there, Mouse there, aren't even, there aren't even six degrees anymore because they own freaking everything. So this is a huge deal for Marvel. It's, it's validation of their dominance of the cultural sphere 
a monument to what you can do with the resources of one of the largest media monopolies ever behind True. you. It's also, frankly, a handy receipt that more or less have <laughs> more or more than lets you get away with managing to bring down Hall H at Comic Con with the announcement that Angelina Jolie will play an obscure Jack Kirby character, basically created as a riff of other obscure characters Kirby created for Marvel's comics rival DC Comics. That happened a lot. That did, um, and yeah, Kirby created. Kirby's own like mm -hmm. Rob Liefeld did that too he, yeah. he did that uh, quite often he knocked his own characters off it also seems to be a big deal to fans for reasons I don't quite understand it as many have been rooting excitedly for this to happen for a while brand loyalty is a hell of a drug I suppose oh my gosh I love this article wow this is so funny so what this means is more Marvel movies um so Let's see where we're going here. This just seems to go on and on. What does it mean? But there's a Lion King right there. Yeah, we're talking about Lion King. We're gonna we're gonna lead into Lion King here. So, box office mojo reports that despite lackluster critical appraisal, John Favreau's CG remake of the beloved anime classic The Lion King raked in a record-setting 185 million opening. Oh, weekend. it was gonna do well no matter what. I mean, it, yeah, it's well, Lion King, you know. Right, but this is this is a problem, kind of, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, here uh, after we get done with this article the movie takes the record for the best july opener from harry potter and the deathly hallows part two a movie and a franchise that walt disney has somehow yet to acquire but would probably really like to they almost got to the theme park they almost but got they to dropped the ball and it went to it went to universal they pissed off uh, jk rowling mm -hmm. they did they basically said we know better than you do jk and she said Pfft. Well, not that we weren't there, but that's, that's the story. That's the story. So she went to Universal, and at that point, Universal was not a legit competitor to Disney World. Harry Potter put him on the map. Yep. So, um, what does it mean? We can likely expect Disney to continue to chew through its 90s animated oh, yeah. renaissance with reckless abandon yep. for remakes. Aladdin and Lion King with uh, Mulan's coming, Little Mermaid's coming, Pocahontas, I'm sure, will come. Uh, so, yeah, this is kind of a problem, though. This is kind of a problem because, yeah, these movies are going to make money when you literally don't have any real competition. Right. I mean, but what, there's no real creativity here either. It's just you, you don't know, have to be creative. No, it's like, but I, I think people are getting tired of. It. I think I don't think it's going to make the money. I think it's going to make. I think people are just genuinely getting burnt out on these live action remakes, on 101 Marvel films, and then the bunch coming, uh, you know, soon too. Oh and God, people, yeah. A lot of people said they stuck with the, stuck with it for a 10 year Avengers thing to get to the Avengers. And now they don't care anymore. Cause they're just like, I'm, I'm out. I'm well, done. Tony's gone. Nobody cares. They're like, I'm yeah. done because I already gave you 10 years. I don't, I'm not giving you more, you know? Right. So even Mr. Rogers, they own freaking Mr. Mr. Rogers. Rogers. He, Tom Hanks, he played Walt Disney. Yeah. And saving Mr. Banks. They don't know Mr. Rogers. You better yeah. clarify. But uh, yeah, this is kind of a problem because like what, how can you stand against, uh, you know, somebody who has all the Infinity Stones? I mean, really, that's kind it's of like where... a Mickey meme where it the had, the, he had the gauntlet and it had like, he, he's missing a couple, a couple stones, like the big franchises, like he didn't have DC uh, and I forget what the other yeah, one was. Yeah, but I mean, this is the thing because Disney's, uh, they, they, they're so... I read an article the other day and it was kind of frightening when you think about it because you know we've always been you know Disney fans but now that you, you really sit and think about it, like every other movie that comes out is a Disney movie now they own Fox they own mm -hmm. Lucasfilm they own Marvel Studios they do the animated movies they own Pixar like all the big tentpole movies save for a handful are Disney and the ones that aren't Disney are getting pummeled by another Disney movie right you know you look at look at Alita well now they own Alita they didn't at the time Fox, though Fox but got pummeled by Captain Marvel. You well, know. they made sure. Like, you know, because right. you can't have two strong females at once. No, that, you know, that's bad, which kind of goes against everything they're screaming about. We need diversity. We need strong females. So we have a, a Latina char girl playing a character going against uh, Brie Larson and her, you know, Carol Danvers, blonde, Karen, white Carol Karen Danvers. Harry. And, and, but you know, that's bad because we can't have two females at once because it might take away from Carol Danvers, who is, you know, the opposite of diversity. But whatever! You can have two females at once. Some people can. They pay good money for that. I know, I'm just saying. That she, would be a movie that, that uh, would make a lot of that money. That wouldn't for be Disney. one. They wouldn't, they wouldn't back that movie. But that anyway. is Thor 4. Love yeah. and Thunder. <laughs> it will be two right, females. You're right, you're right. Two females at you're once. Right. Uh, so this is kind of scary though, because like you were saying, like they don't have to be creative anymore. Disney is like, they become the Borg. I mean, they basically, oh they have, they're like going from, uh, studio to studio, acquiring 
the technology acquiring the IP, but they're so mechanical now. And that kind of brings me to like the Lion King. And that's the biggest complaint people had about one. It, it was, it was really a phoned in remake. Mm -hmm. Now disclaimer, we haven't seen it yet. No, this is what the, the, the critics have been saying. Right. And uh, you know, I, I really am not excited. Now I love the jungle book because I think the jungle book was a movie that really needed an update. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, having an actual human child in it helped tremendously although when you think about it and you watch the making of it it's kind of creepy that john favreau basically spent all day watching a little boy in his underwear run around in front of a green well, screen it wasn't like that but anyway um you know there was that human element there whereas with the lion king it's it's not actually there but um the lion king is like my all-time probably my all-time favorite animated disney movie I, I i love it and i just didn't want to see it bastardized <laughs> i'm kind of like i it's one of those movies where like if I, I saw this, I'm afraid it would retroactively make the original movie worse mm -hmm. somehow, you know, or I'm always going to think about the new one. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I, I don't really, Lion King, it's okay. But the big, okay, so the big complaint, the big complaint with people is how stiff it is compared mm -hmm. to the animated original, which had a lot of life. Um, and I love this part right here. They talk about the, the death of Mufasa. Uh, spoiler. You know, the original's been yeah, out for yeah. 25 years. Uh, oh. Mufasa gets dropped off a cliff. And since they pretty much follow it beat for beat, the original, he also gets dropped off a cliff in this version. However, however, they said it's unintentionally funny because we're dealing with photorealistic cats that talk. Okay. So they said it's, it's you know, when Scar has him and snarls long live the king, he claws his brother's paws and Mufasa, Mufasa flies backward to the, to the chaos below, which... You know, a, a pivotal scene in the original movie. They said, it's sad, it's objectively sad, but I cannot stress enough that what you're watching at this moment as the music dramatically swells and time slows down is the most detail for detail, feature for feature, hair for exact hair, realistic looking CGI lion you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Fall, flail, flailing. flailing through the air as he yells with the extremely human baritone <laughs> bass voice of James Earl Jones. <laughs> it's a three second shot that cracks your mind and sense of theater decorum like a Lovecraft story. It's not haha -ha funny, really. It's someone ripped their pants at the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, oh my God, that needs to be a quote on the Blu-ray box. It's, it's, <laughs> Collider it's, says. Collider says, is someone ripped their pants at the funeral funny? That is the li the live action uh, you, lion. You know, you shouldn't laugh because uh, that lion cub is literally watching his father die. But come on, <laughs> the lion is yelling like he's people. It's impossible to suspend disbelief when the photorealistic animation makes you stay firmly within the real world. So instead you laugh. Oh my god. Uh yeah, so But he's cute. Simba's cute. Yeah, he is cute. But you know, that's what people said. They said it's just it's like one of those things where it doesn't it doesn't work that well in live action. But you know, Disney's kind of phoning it in now. Everything yeah, everything they're just making everything over again. It's just like why? It's all remakes. I mean they're bur they're burning through the nineties greatest hits in a, like a single year. <laughs> your kids and they'd have like the 70s and 80s and you could buy the, the cd collections or whatever that's what this reminds me of you know yeah and what are they going to do when they run out of good animated movies to remake you know like i said i i can see the jungle book getting a remake because the original while it had some catchy tunes it really wasn't like a classic on the level of snow white or what are you looking at with that i face? can't stop looking at the tarantino balls Oh my God, Quentin Tarantino is a Balchinian. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's just like, what are they going to do? They've already, they've gone through Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. uh, we've burned through Aladdin. We've burned through The Lion King. Aladdin and The Lion King in the same year. Well, see, Little Mermaid was 89, so that wasn't in the 90s. But Beauty and the Beast it, was the first one in the 90s. Yeah, but it was, it was so part of that. So we did Beauty and the Beast, and then we did La Aladdin, and now we're on The Lion King. So we got and Pocahontas. Then, and then we're heading, what was after that? Was that was it Mulan after that? Uh, Hunchback, I think, was after that. Oh, was it? Then Mulan, then, I want to say, no, no, then Hercules, I think, and then... Which is uh, Pinky Boo's favorite. It is. Yeah, Pink, Hercules is really good. She likes that. That's her new favorite. She informed me of this today. So Gerald Scarf, now here's a fun fun fact for you all. Uh, Gerald Scarf, who did the character designs for Hercules, actually is, uh, he did um, savage caricatures. He did... Uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. He did the artwork for that, and he did Pink Floyd the Wall. There you so go. he he drew a giant ass judge uh, before he drew Hercules and Hades. There you go. So that's yeah, your you fun heard fact. Here, you hear um, here. 
Yeah, and that was a very weird choice for Disney to pick him to come in, but I, I, it worked. It, it looked it looked good. It was a good looking movie. Anyway, I'm sure they'll remake it. Um, and he's a ginger, so he won't be in the remake. No, no, never. They don't. You know. they, that's that's you know. No, you can't do that. Speaking of, people were asking about The Witcher, and then the one character in The Witcher was a red a ginger before. And oh yeah, not. yeah, yeah. They're they're degingering. The, the so even The Witcher is degingering characters. So even though I being... really don't know much about it, so I really can't give people like, why aren't you giving a review of that? I don't know enough about it to give a review. To be fair, yeah. I'm not that cool. Apparently, you're not that cool. Well, there's no gingers in it now, so you don't care. That's right. Uh, it's gonna be on Netflix. All I know is that the, the no guards. No red hair. I don't care. The guards look like they're wearing garbage bags, or they're made out of testicles, or something. I don't know what's going on there. It's, <laughs> okay. It looks very low budget compared to what you know it could have been. But, but anyway, sorry, we're sidetracked. So place. back back to the Lion King. Yeah, they've already they're burning through all these '90s movies and '80s because Little Mermaid they consider that like part of the Disney Renaissance. And now they're patting themselves on the back when they beat the records of other movies that they have acquired. They own. I mean, so it's like it's like beating yourself in a race. It's like. I won against myself. So what you're saying is they're beating themselves. Basically. Like, look, I ran this race in this one time, but now I beat my best time. So yay me. You know? Yeah, this you're is like... race and it's all you. It's all you. It's like, this is it. I mean, Disney, they're like three quarters of the entertainment coming out now is going to be Disney. So Disney is just like cannibalizing themselves. And I think the reason they're doing the streaming service, which I'm not even convinced is going to work terribly well because of what's going on with Netflix and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason they're pushing so many movies and TV shows onto that is I don't think realistically they can put more movies in the theater without eating themselves alive. Right, so hence the streaming service. You right, know? so now they can dump all the, the you know, put the A-list movies in the theater and then all the B-list stuff goes direct to, to video or direct to, you know, and that's where Star Wars has basically been relegated to, I think, is, is Well, for the time being because of... Uh, you know, because it's too much uh, franchise. What they call that again? Franchise, franchise fatigue. fatigue. Which they're heading where before with Star Wars or with uh, Marvel too. It's just you know, come on guys. But yeah, it's just now you just it's all Disney all the time. Now I mean I like the parks. Don't get me wrong. And I have a problem where I buy their merchandise a lot because I do love Haunted Mansion and I do love their Alex Nani bracelets. And I have a problem. You need to cut them off. Cut the no, cord. I do not need to come off. Cut they're, the cord. No, they're cute. Mickey's, I love them. <laughs> so they, Mickey's got his his tendrils in. I, I love I love the haunted mansion and I love I love Alex Nani Disney bracelets. So and I also have as possibly a spirit jersey problem. But, um, you know I, I I I'm not so blind to you know brand loyalty that I can't you know call a spade a spade. So I mean, you know. Look at these. These are two of two of Disney's greatest animated movies, uh, Lion King and Aladdin. They both have. Rotten scores for the live action at, remake. The audience scores are higher than the critic scores. On yeah. Both. Um. Yeah. Ninety four percent on the lad, and I've talked to people who watch this, and it was really good. I haven't seen it yet. Um. And the Lion King, it was like eighty some percent that was yeah, audience so score. It's, well, yeah, because it's a. Copy. I would trust the audience before I trust the critics. But it's a copy of a much better movie, I'm sure. Right. You know, it it's it's a copy of a copy. That's what everybody says. It's, the original's better. But... And what what's going to happen when they run out of? Then they have to be creative again and invent things. Or, well, they actually don't invent things. A lot of times they, they get in trouble for repurposing other people's uh, yeah. stuff. So they're going to have to, like, you know, get, stop taking the easy way out for things, I guess. That's what's going to have to happen. Yeah. And I think it's, it's you know, sort of like I said, it's kind of become like the Borg where, you know, they, they're just, they go around the galaxy acquiring technology mm -hmm. and acquiring uh, personnel, but they don't really come up with anything themselves. And Disney used to be a company that invented things. Well, they still do invent things when it comes to like some of their equipment they use, but a lot of it's theme parks related. Yeah. They're innovative when it comes to, to that kind of stuff because the theme parks are still like the things that they really care about. Um, one one quick thing before we wrap this up. One of the comments, I thought it was hilarious and, the, and you don't have to go there, but one of the comments in the audience score. They were talking about how finally about take, now it's out the movie so you can take your kids to see what you'd liked as a child. And I'm like, that's called, you know, DVD. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not hard. You could just, you know, buy the Blu-ray and play it on your TV. This just feel, saying. I, I saw some other people comment and this, you know, this is the last thing I'm going to say here and then we wrap it up. But um, it feels like the direct to DVD cheap quals. Yeah, they, they did. Yeah, they said that in the comments too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that back in the day, you know, I don't know if that was if, Eisner. That was Eisner. Eisner's way of, of making money off of, uh, you know, successful movies was to make endless sequels on DVD. Or sometimes TV shows. Of them. Or TV shows. And they're kind of doing that with Disney Plus again, mm -hmm. though, aren't they? They're doing it with Star Wars. It's like mm -hmm. they're doing the same the same thing. They're taking something that's successful and they're either remaking it in live action or they're going to make a TV a sequel, show. Or sequel, rebooting it, or whatever. Or reboot or whatever. 
um, instead of coming up with new things. I think Hollywood's just lazy. I mean, and yeah. I think the people that are taking over are too busy uh, making fan fictions of what they love and to, you know, making it their way, which isn't yeah. necessarily a good thing. And they're not, you're not spending enough time innovating new things. So, and that's a problem. We need more new things, people. Go make new things. Go make some new things. So we're going to wrap this one up? Yes. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Goodbye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.